In an extraordinarily rare and potentially historic move, the House could vote today on whether to expel embattled New York Congressman George Santos. The U.S. House archive shows only five lawmakers have ever been expelled. And if today's vote was to be successful, Santos would be the first in more than 20 years to be removed in a motion brought by members of his own delegation. NBC's Ali Vitali is on Capitol Hill for us. So, Ali, I know this requires a two-third vote of the chamber to expel a lawmaker, but what are we expecting? How's this going to unfold? Well, it's not clear that the math works when they need to get two-thirds of the majority of this chamber to actually vote to expel Santos. Of course, we know that almost all Democrats would be on board for that, but the question is how many Republicans would also join them. We know, for example, that several key New York freshmen, including Mike Lawler, uh, Lalota, Desposito, all of those lawmakers are the ones who brought this expulsion forward in the first place. They're expected to continue forward, but again, we're not sure that they have the numbers on their side to actually expel Santos. There's two things here that I'm paying attention to. The first is the fact that leadership, all the way back to Kevin McCarthy as Speaker, and probably now for Speaker Johnson as well, they've been reluctant to move forward on expelling Santos. They've been more than happy, though, to let this play itself out in court and to let it play itself out in the Ethics Committee. That's because the numbers game here for House Republicans is a very real one. They're already operating with a very thin majority, losing Santos would make it ever thinner. The other piece of this, though, Chris, is the fact that the Ethics Committee itself released a uh, statement yesterday saying that they've been doing their work since February when they first opened this probe into Santos. They've been subpoenaing, they've been getting documents together, and that they'll have an update on what comes next from their perspective on or before November 17th. That could be enough to keep anyone who wants to vote to expel Santos at bay, just giving them enough cover to at least get through Thanksgiving. Yeah, I saw that notice. 40 witnesses, 37 subpoenas, yeah. 170,000 pages of documents. So we'll wait for that. In the meantime, I think there's going to be another vote expected, right, uh, on censuring potentially Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. What's that about? Yeah, this is the settling of scores between both sides. Republicans came forward with a censure for Congresswoman Tlaib in the aftermath of some of the comments that she made that they're calling anti-Semitic, especially in the aftermath of Hamas's attack on Israel. Of course, Tlaib, someone who's been consistently pro-Palestine. And then on the other hand, you saw Democrats immediately after that censure request come forward and say that they were censuring Marjorie Taylor Greene for similar kinds of statements. So we're watching these censures continue to fly past each other. We'll watch all of these sort of congressional HR complaints play themselves out on the floor tonight. These are the first votes that we'll see in a series of votes this week. And we'll watch to see how this actually works out. I do think there's an interesting point of history, though. And I always look to our House producer, Kyle Stewart, for these. He was looking back on what the first censure was actually over. And a member was censured for just speaking ill or in an untoward way about the speaker. Just striking how far we've come in terms of the language that we've come to accept as censurable versus not for House members as they talk about their colleagues, Chris.